came after this church because right, he's on. got a high calling yes, for this sir. church. Yes, sir. Yeah, I wonder if everybody's hearing me right now. He's got a high yes, calling yes, for this yes, church. Yes, Each and every one of you under the sound of my voice, you have yes, a calling. Yes, and, uh, this is not like every other church. Uh, this is not something that happens by just receiving the Holy Ghost. This is something that happens by years and years and years of fighting, and especially in this area. Yes, sir. And yes, with sir. The, the spirits and the things that each and every one of you have to fight just by being in church in this area, just by being dedicated to God and living for God, there is a, a, a special calling in the morning that comes with that. And uh, I'm telling you, each and every one of you cannot go through the things you went through and, and have to live through God up against these spirits. And God does not want to bring you deeper. Right. Amen. Right. We've got to have it. Yes, Amen. We've got That's to go right. deeper. Yes, sir. Amen. And uh, I tell you what, I saw something today. And uh, it just made me think. It said, how short an hour is at a ball game. Oh, how short an hour is whenever you go shopping. Oh, how short an hour is whenever you're having fun. You know, whenever you're hanging out with friends, uh, yeah. whenever you're reading your favorite book, whatever it is you like to do, how short an hour seems. Right. But man, how long an hour still it is to some people when they're starting to pray. They yes, said, how long an hour it is whenever they're in church. How long of an hour it is whenever they hear that sermon that's going to go on for about an hour, that message from God. And then they said, Oh, man, how big a $10 bill looks when it's going in that offering plate. But how small that $10 bill looks when you go to Walmart. <laughs> and I mean, it just had, I wish I had the list, but it had a long list of these things. And it was just making me think, man, how in hindsight, when we're in the house of God, uh, we're, we're so, if we're not careful, we'll get so withdrawn yeah, and we'll get so on. critical of every little thing. Right. But if we was to take what we were given in the house of God oh, out on. there and give it out there, it's not worth anything. Most of right. right. And so we have got to be so careful to have me thinking today of just giving God everything we right. got. Right. Amen. Right. Spiritually, right. we've got to give everything we got. Yes, Amen. Yes, we're going to be going to First Kings chapter 13 and we're going to be starting at verse 1 and, uh, I'm just going to tell you tonight we are completely dependent on the Holy Ghost right now and uh, we just want to go where God wants us to go and we are 100% dependent on the Holy Ghost tonight but I know God is going to speak to each and every one of you 
the Lord has a word for this right. church. And this tonight is specifically for this church. This word tonight is specifically for this church. And uh, God gave this to me this afternoon. And uh, I mean, I don't have a, a, a note. I don't have one thing written on it. But I know what God wants you to hear. Right. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 13. And we're going to be starting at verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. Man of God. There came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And uh, Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by the name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Right. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the men of God which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on me. In his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it again to him. In the altar also was written, the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord. And the king's hand was restored to him again All right. and became as it was before. All right. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. This is the part we really got to get a hold of right here. For it was, for so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. All right. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. All right. Amen. Why don't we just all lay their Bibles to the side right, right now? Oh, hallelujah. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, God, we just talk one thing. He under your dosi, under your dosi. Let's get a hold of the Lord in here. He can't do it, 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 do it. Jesus' name. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes, God, yes, God. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Uh, I'm going to preach to you from this fall the curse of getting comfortable. The curse of getting comfortable. And uh, like I said before, this is not prettied up, this is not polished. But this is what God wants you to hear today. And uh, we see right off in 1 Kings chapter 13 that uh, right at the beginning that it lets us know that this is a man of God. He is a prophet of God. And not only has he just came into Bethel, but he is there on a mission. He was sent there by the word of God. Uh, he not only is he a man of God, but he is sensitive to God. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you may be wondering, why does that need to be clarified? Uh, I think it does. Uh -huh. Because today we've got so many people behind pulpits. Uh, I wonder if they should even be called preachers. Uh -huh. Because there is no sensitivity uh -huh. 
to anything that they do. Uh, they will have messages planned out for three months from now. They'll have their songs ready for five months from now. And you can go right now on their church page and you can find everything that's going to be happening in the next six months. There is no sensitivity hardly anymore. And uh, it's very sad to see it. But used to, you did not have to clarify that a man of God was sensitive. Right. But nowadays, I notice people will be talking about men of God. And then every now and then you'll hear them say, now that man of God was sensitive. Right. Uh, he, he knew how to listen right. to God. Uh, but if we look in the Bible, that if you didn't hear from God, you were not a man of God. Right. If you were not sensitive to God, then you were not a prophet. And uh, today, though, I, it's sad, but it needs to be clarified that not only was this a man of God, but he was very sensitive. And the Lord told him to go into Bethel. And uh, we see that he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. He was burdened in his heart, and he was heartbroken. And he was crying out to God, and he was there making sacrifices, holding on to the altar. And he was speaking the word of God. And then it started to get a hold yeah. of this king. It started to get a hold uh -huh. of King Jeroboam. And uh, he started hearing the sayings of the man of God, which cried against the altar of Bethel. And uh, he put forth his hand on the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know really what the motive was at this time uh, for this king to lay his hand on the altar. But I know that when he laid his hand on it, that his hand dried up. Uh, my only guess is that his hand was not worthy at the time to touch the altar. But there was something that built up in the king. There was something that built up in this king that made him burden and made him cry and made him reach out to the altar. And then we see uh, that uh, the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored him again. So not only was this a man of God that was sensitive, that listened to God, but whenever he talked to God, whenever he called on God, God listened. Right. And whenever he called on God to heal this king, to heal his hand and restore it back, uh -huh. God listened. Yeah. So we see very clearly that this was a man that walked close yes. to God. All right. It's not hard to see that this was someone that had a strong relationship uh -huh. yeah. with God. And afterwards, the king, he, he, he was so grateful for the man of God, the prophet, praying to God and getting him to heal his head, his head coming back. He said, well, well, well man, you, you need to come back with me to my home. Come on. And you need to come with me. I've got food ready. Right. I've got all the food you want. I've got all the drink you need. I want to take care of you. I want you to come in here and I want you to eat. I want you to enjoy yourself. All right. But, but this prophet, he says something a little bit strange. And we don't know right now the reasoning of why. But uh, the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Right. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water nor turn again. By the same way that thou camest. Uh -huh. uh, right? There's no other explanation other than God told me not to. Right. And that's what this man of God based his life on oh, at this point. No. That God told me not to do it. So I'm not going to do it. God told me not to eat here. God told me not to drink here. He's probably worn out and he's tired and he's journeyed a long way. But he's cried and he's cried and he's had a powerful prayer meeting. And healings has happened. And now the king opened up his door to the greatest food. There was the greatest drink. There was the greatest home there was. And he simply refused it because God told him not to. God told him not to eat. And uh, we see that he obeyed the word of God. And he went the opposite way. He did not go the way that he came. He went away. 
and God told him not to eat or drink and he also told him to turn again by the same way that thou camest. Don't keep going that direction. You need to go back to where you came from. God said, don't go any further than the Bethel. Do this for me. Do this miracle. Get on that altar. Cry out until something changes within that king. And then go back where you came from. And now we see that there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came. Uh, uh, brother, you got that up? Put that up there. I want them to see this. Put up verse 11 if you can. All right. All right. We're going to be going through this. Come here. Come here, Brother Wes. I want you to walk with me. We're going to get out here for a minute. Now, I'll ever do this. I feel led to do it. Now, there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. All right. And his sons came and told him. All the works that the man of God had done. Now, you're the man of God, Brother West. You're welcome, brother. That's a good compliment. Amen. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now they're trying to know prophet in Bethel. Uh, and his sons came and told him all the works of the man of God had done that day in Bethel. We now see that this old prophet's sons was spying right. on this man of God. Yeah. Why? Let me tell you tonight, if you think that the enemy is not watching you, if you think tonight that the enemy does not have his eyes on you, and he's not looking for the perfect opportunity to get a hold of you, if you think tonight that the devil's going to play fair, I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to poke you in the eyes. He's going to kick you in the shin. He's going to do everything dirty that he can do. And we see right here that not only while this man of God was crying and hiding a powerful prayer meeting and getting a hold of God for this king, that all along these evil prophet's sons were spying on him. And the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. Next verse, brother. They came and they took notes and they took down everything that was said and they came to tell the father while the man of God turned away and he'd done what he was supposed to do and he started going the other way that God told him to go. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went which came to Judah. He started asking where to go. Uh, yeah. Where did this old prophet head to? And he said it to his sons, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode their own. Uh, this old prophet was looking for the right opportunity. We're not just talking about some evil person. But this man himself once had a relationship with God. This man himself is an old prophet. And for some reason, something got a hold of him in his spirit that he wanted to take down and demise this young prophet that God was using for the king. And he wanted to take this old prophet down. And we see that he got on his donkey and he went towards the young prophet and went after the man of God. And where did he find him? When he went towards... Come here, Brother West. Sit down right over there. And when he went after the man of God, where did he find him at? Where did he find this prophet? He was sitting under an oak tree. And he said unto them, him, Thou the man of God that came us from Judah. Let me tell you something. If you sit down tonight, if you're walking where God has told you to be, and you may be right now in the best relationship with God you've ever been in, you may do, be doing better than you've ever been. And you may be in the more services than you've ever been. And you're thinking in your mind, I have been doing so good in church. God has been speaking to me. I've been calling fire down from heaven. I've been shouting and I've been praying. But if you sit down, if you sit down, oh, I wish.
wish somebody would hear me right now. I'm telling you, I don't care how strong your prayer life is. I don't care how good you can speak in tongues. But it don't matter where you're at. If you sit down on what God's wanting you to do, then a lying serpent will catch up to you. If you stop where God is trying to get you to go, if you stop in the will of God and you decide that you're tired and you're going to get comfortable for a little while, I don't care how strong your relationship with God is, it's going to leave an opportunity for a lying old prophet to get up in your ear. It's going to leave an opportunity for a lying old serpent to get towards you. He went after the man of God and he found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said unto him, Thou the man of God that came us from Judah. And he said, I am. Uh-huh. Now I wonder tonight, I really wonder right now how many people, uh, how many people this church has seen, how many people each and every one of you has seen that has came in here and it seems like they're doing so good. And God is using them. And they're bringing people to church. And people under the sound of my voice. God was using you so deep at one point. And you really felt like God was taking you somewhere. And you started reaching souls. And you had a burden in your heart. But you started to get weary. And you started to get tired. And you started to get worn out. And you decided to get comfortable. What this man of God thought was just a little place to rest. Was just a little place to sit down. Was the very place where he was going to meet that old lion spirit. And then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, Listen, he still got in his mind what God said. I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. But the question is, if you know this, man of God, then why are you sitting under this tree? If I could ask you right now, man of God, you know this, and you're so confident in what you just said. But you're sitting under this tree. All right, so you're okay. sitting where you're not meant to be. Yeah, so. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there. Nor turn again to go. By the way thou camest. He said unto him. Listen to this old, old lion spirit coming out. I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spoke unto me. He comes to him. He says, hey, man, it's okay. Yeah. God spoke to you. Well, he just spoke to me. Yeah. An angel has came unto me. Right. An angel. Yeah. By the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee into thine house, so that he may eat bread and drink water. Right. But he lied oh, I, unto him. Jesus My Lord. Come on. I'm telling you what tonight. You want to know where that old spirit's going to get a hold of you? You want to know tonight how that old spirit's going to latch itself on you? It's when you start to sit down, God. It's when you start to sit down, oh God. When you sit down on your worship. When you sit down on your prayer. When you sit down on burden. When you sit down on God, when you sit down on anointing, I don't care tonight where you are. I don't care how good you're doing. You do not have the right to sit down on God. I don't care how tired and weary you are tonight. I don't care how worn out you are in your spirit. You better not sit down on God. I'm telling you tonight, you've got to keep Somebody up those seat. Oh, I wish somebody would get a hold of this right now. What God is trying to do in here. He's broke through things and he's tearing down strongholds. 
somebody's here tonight and he's trying to tell you to take a little break, to calm down a little bit, to sit down a little while and just rest. You've done good. You've worked hard for God. You've been working in the church and you've been doing this and that. You deserve a little time off from God. But this preacher's here to tell you tonight you don't have time to sit down. You don't have time to put a hold on God. You've got to go exactly where God's calling you to go tonight. Oh, God, I wish somebody would call his name right now. Oh, Jesus. He got out of this. This old line servant, he came. He came up to him. And he told him, hey, I'm a prophet too, man. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian too. Hey, brother. It don't take all that. Brother, brother, it, Look, I, I serve the same God you do, brother. And I'm a prophet too. Hey, I'm saved too. It don't take all that. Oh, oh, oh you, you know what? I had a visitation. And God told me the opposite of what you say. It don't take all that. I wonder tonight how many people have been so on fire for God. And the reason why they're not in here tonight is because they worked and they worked and they decided that they deserved a little time off from them. They deserved, they thought they deserved a little time off from services. And they thought they deserved to miss that prayer meeting. They deserved to, to just kind of cool down a little bit. And while they were sitting down under an oak tree, an old lion, false doctrine prophet got in their ear and started telling them, man, this shade feels real good. This shade feels really nice. That prophet, the reason why we got to verse 19, the reason why now we're seeing he went back with him. All right. Just a few verses ago, he knew and he was doing just what God told him to do in the yes, face sir. of a king. Oh. The Come richest on. and the grandest place to be. Yes, sir. But what got him to kind of fall away? Wow. Oh man, when he was in that Holy Ghost service, Brother Driscoll, yes, he was doing great. Yes, when he was crying out to God and he was on this altar and he was screaming out to God and God done a miracle and a healing, he was doing just fine. But it's whenever he got away from everybody else and he started walking by himself and he started getting a little tired and a little weary. He started getting a little worn out. We see then just because of how tired he was he found a little shade to see. Yes, yes, and when he got comfortable under that oak tree, uh, and that old lion prophet came up, oh, his flesh to go. Yeah, yeah. He thought, you know what, I am kind of hungry. Yeah. And I, I am kind of thirsty. Oh, right, uh, and maybe God changed his mind because he's uh, seen how good I've done. Uh, uh, and he's seen how hard I've been working. Yeah. Verse 20, uh, brother. Jesus. And it came to pass as they sat at the table. That the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. So all of a sudden, this is amazing right here. This old backslid prophet that lied to him in the first place. That lied on God. That lied about the Lord's angels. That lied to the prophet to come back to his home. That made this prophet and it was an orchestrated demise of this man of God. This man of God sitting with this old evil prophet. Yeah. And God uses this yes, evil sir. prophet. Yes, sir. God speaks through him. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me right now. I don't care what kind of miracles they're having. I don't care what kind of healings you see. I don't care how good they sound. You better be careful about who you're sitting at the table with. You better be careful about who you let talk to you. You better be careful about who you let get in your ear. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody right now. I don't care how wise they sound and how spiritual they seem. If they're going against the word of God and they're not agreeing with what God has told you, then you better stay as far away from them as you can. I'm telling you, you better not let an old lion prophet. 
prophet giving you in tonight. He don't know you no son of the Lord. Oh, worship the Lord. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm telling you what. People will say, well, well, Brother Talbert, if they're not right, and if they're not right with God, then how is God doing this? If they're not right, then how are healings happening? Oh, I'll tell you what, God can use anybody. God can do whatever he wants to do through whoever he wants to do. And we can see it right here. This old evil, plain as day, old lying prophet God speaks to him. And he says, thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in this place of the which the Lord did say to thee eat no bread and drink no water thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers and it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled him the ass to wait for the prophet whom he had brought back. Now get this. Wow. Now he's on that old backslid prophet's donkey. Uh, uh. What the what the old evil prophet rode in on, Jesus. he's about to ride out on. Uh, so we uh, see uh, just uh, how simultaneously right. Right. this old evil prophet yeah. and this man of God that just had one amazing prayer meeting yeah. and had healings, uh -huh. he's now getting on the horse that this old evil man rode in on. And when he was gone, a lion met him, by the way, and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. Oh, God. He don't know you to Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This man of God. Hey, we're talking about we're talking about just 20 something verses you can read it in less than a minute we're talking about in just less than 20 verses we went from reading what could have been a powerful man of God to another statistic that we went from seeing somebody that was healing of kings dry the pain and that was burning and that he had heard from God. Oh, Jesus. Brother Jay, what happened between then and the shade? All right. oh, Whenever that God. man decided to sit down on God, he started to lose his sensitivity. Right. Whenever he decided to sit down in the shade right. oh. and to get comfortable. Uh, well, I'm telling you tonight, there's a curse God. about getting Come comfortable. On, there's a curse about getting comfortable. Yeah, right. Now, I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how good it looks. You better not go against the will of God. Right. There are right. so many right. people that will get pulled into this mindset and into this way of life. And I was talking with Pastor Driscoll about it a few days ago, just talking about the world. And we talked about how it seems that uh, across the board, and I told him in so many churches that I go to, it seems like we will get to a certain point and people oh will get satisfied. Yeah, come on, uh, they'll come up here and they'll get a little bit of healing. Uh, uh, they'll get a little word from God and they'll hear a message that will make them shout a little bit and they'll pull their heart strings and then they'll go out and they'll go find a little oak tree to sit under. Oh, God. And they'll say, well, I was there a few days ago. And I'm going to take a little break today. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been in church all week. I'm just going to take a break oh, today. I, I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to pray. I'm just oh, God. I'm just tired. Oh, God. Dude, I'm telling you plain as day tonight. If you sit on God, then an old lion prophet's going to catch up to you. That prophet would have never made it to that man of God if that man of God wouldn't have sat down. Oh, he got to the little soon. I wish somebody would start praying to God in here. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, if you think that the devil ain't got some little imps, 
up. Some little demons watching you right now and watching what you're doing and what you're active in. If you think he's not waiting on the perfect moment to find you sitting down, if you think he's not waiting on the perfect opportunity to find you getting comfortable, you've got another thing coming. Well, I'm here to tell the saint of God tonight. I'm here to tell somebody in the sanctuary of Abilene, now is not the time to sit down on God. You still got somewhere to go. You still got things to do. God still has a calling. We still got to be sensitive to God. What God told me earlier before I came out here, what he told me for the church was, he said, you tell them that if they don't continue and go on the way that I'm bringing them, then their old selves are going to catch up to them. Oh, God. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. That's the way I wrote it down on paper in there when God told it to me. He said, if they don't continue in the way that I'm leading them right now, their old selves are going to catch up to them. Oh, God. I'm telling you, we, we, don't, we don't have the time to get comfortable. We don't have the time to get eaten up by lions. We don't have the time to let old false doctrine get in our minds. Yes, sir. We don't have any time. I don't care how good that shade looks right now. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how good it sounds. Ooh. It all started when that man of God started losing his sensitivity to God. One minute he heard from God. Oh, God. And then the next minute he was hearing from an old evil prophet. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I think, I mean, I just, I think right now about family members. So many family members in my, in my family that God has such an amazing call. I mean, there's one family member in particular and I'm telling you what, they can win souls like nobody else. I'm telling you, if she was here yeah. right now, if yeah. she was in church, I kid you not, right now that road would have 10 kids on it. Kids flock to her. I've never seen anybody have a way with kids. And all the kids in the neighborhood, every day, you've never seen anything like it. You go to her house, and all the kids in the neighborhood are there. Almost all day, they stay there because they want to be around her because she has such a sweet spirit. And it hurts me so much right now because I think about how much God could use her. How much God could use what she has. And I think about how God had anointed her and all the things that she was doing. But somewhere along the way, I used to wonder, God, how did that happen? As a young child, I'd look, I said, God, how did that happen? That's something that bothers me. God, how, how, how did they get to this point? And we sit back as saints of God and we sit down and we get this high and mighty attitude that we are invincible. And that nothing bad's going to happen to us. And that as long as we come to church, we're going to be okay. But the enemy's not coming after you when you're sitting in this pew. The enemy's not after you when you're up at this altar. All right, come on. But the enemy's after you when it's you and yourself. When it's just you and your thoughts. When you're walking that road back to where you came from. When you're on the road back home. When you're driving back to work. When you're driving back to your home. When you're going to bed. 
that old voice that says, I know you're tired. I know you're worn out. I know you're weary. Won't you just miss today? I know you're tired. Everybody else is going to be an outreach. Why don't you just stay one day? You've been through so much. And I'm not advocating you working yourself to death. But there's no more important work than what is happening in your life. Oh, and I, I just can't stress it enough. One minute, she's up testifying in a powerhouse. So anointed. And when you hear her speak, you cry, and you shout, and you praise God, and you know that God's going to use her mightily. And you see her right now. And she's addicted to cigarettes. She's addicted to alcohol. Her husband is addicted, addicted to nicotine. Right. Addicted to alcohol. Right. Addicted to tobacco. Right. Right. Marijuana. And then you have kids that are enrolled in the world. Because somewhere along the way, the mama sat under an oak tree. Yeah. 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 He owned the river. Oh. That man of God yeah. did not have it in his mind that today I'm going to die. That man of God did not have in his mind that today I'm going to go against what God has told me. That very day he said, I'm doing the will of God. All right. After that prayer meeting, yeah. after that service, yeah. I wonder if anyone's ever been like that. You came up here and you cried and you prayed and you and you gotten with your spouse or you gotten with your friends in the church and you said, man, I've got all these ideas God's given me. I'm going to do this. I've got all these plans that God has given me to reach people. I've got some things to help out our kids. All right, I've got some things to do outreach. Yeah, yeah. I've got something that God has told me to do for our church. And then you start doing it. And then you stop. I can't tell you how many, how many people. I can't tell you how many people I've seen it happen to. God will give them such a great idea, such a great motive that will bring in souls. And they're doing it, Pastor. And it's working. And they're winning souls. And they're teaching Bible studies. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, yeah. you think back. Yeah. And you, well, weren't they doing this? And God showed me. Right. I wondered, man, why do we do this? Yeah. It's because of oak trees. Wow. It's because of comfortability. If we're not comfortable, if we're not careful, we'll pick being comfortable All right. over doing the will of God. It's just so much more comfortable to not have to worry about it. To not have to worry. I'm telling you what. I'm going to tell you. It's not enough tonight. God's not looking for somebody that's just satisfied with being saved. He's not just looking for somebody that's satisfied with just coming to church by themselves and getting fed and then going home. Oh, why don't we all stand right now? He got no, 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 very simple. If you're not careful, right now the church has been going up, going up. Everybody in here has been going up. God's been using everybody at that meter going up. Praise and worship has been on the high. And if you're not careful, the moment revival ends, you're going to find an old tree to go sit under. Oh, God. In Jesus' name. My God. In Jesus' name.
You know what God's wanting right now? I'm telling you what God wants. This is what God's trying to tell somebody. If we're not sensitive, then anybody can manipulate us. If we don't have a relationship with God in the deepest sincerity, then anybody can get a hold of us. Oh, God. You don't know your ghost. Won't you find a place to pray right now? God help us. Somebody needs to pray right now. It's like, God, I don't want to be comfortable. God, get me out of my comfort zone right now. God, if there's something you wanted me to do, if there's something you gave me for my church, God, help me get back there. God, if there's a calling you had for me, help me get back there, God. Let's 
spirit of brokenness come on you right now. Get broken before the Lord. Empty yourself out to God. Pour out to God right now. Come on, don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to cry to God. That man of God was okay as long as he kept crying out to God. As long as